looks terrible, but it could be. <laughs> Some of it would be used. Some of it could be used. I'll have to dull her down a bit. Gotta put real darks in some of these wigs. Real, real darks. So we have to enjoy the full width of the brush and the fullness of the color outdoors there. But it's the artist's responsibility, I think, to exaggerate some of that stuff in a few places, the better to create the illusion of how it really was. So that exaggeration with colors sometimes are awfully exciting and pretty important. Grays on the water can be so beautiful, they can be warm purple tone sometimes. But I'll build that up a little later. That has to be pulled through. Back to the horizon. Now with some illusion of reverence, I'll slowly paint in the horizon, come down to the distant water below that, and then into the foreground. If I creep up on the idea, maybe it won't, won't run away. I can do that so easily. Your very enthusiasm in the early days of being an artist can wreck your idea. But then you can't lose that, so there's ways around it. <coughs> like copying and tracing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really in blue, a little bit of black, and some white, and a little uh, feeling of full, warm. horizon in there that sort of saw goes back a Why don't it be too, uh, why don't it be too, this is this way, it goes like this. Well, don't ask me why I do it, but I do it every time. I knew I'd do it, you know, it's hopeless. <laughs> This is up and that's down. This is how great I am. And I can take a ruler when I begin the painting and measure all that horizon with a ruler. And it doesn't work. It still goes way up there. So I have to concentrate. I'm going to get pull this way up here. When I want to see if it's rough, my first view of the lake, whether it's Navy Pier or down here in the dunes, uh, usually you check the horizon right off the bat. There's a little little bit of sawtooth rough. I know the surface is going out there. Waves are breaking. But back through here with the cerulean blue, a little friendly bland. Sometimes we lay it in sort of flat and dull, keeping it simple, breaking it up later, darks going in. Now I better pay attention to the water, how uh, that is, uh, figure what the heck happens from there to here, there to here, and from here to there, and all of that. This has got to be put in with some degree of caution. <clears throat> so I will start scrubbing and rubbing it down a little bit. A little black, green, one tones. Putting it in kind of chilly and dark.
all these open spots. Well, when you flatten it, get rid of open spots. And the better to work from dark to light, goodness, sometimes your vision becomes lost. The original idea can be out of sight, but that's part of the responsibility of the artist. Sustain his original idea right through to the last. And then, if that doesn't work, try another and another. But your first impression should be your last consideration. And that makes quite a difference in reviewing what instigated the idea in the first place. And I do that quite a bit when I stray from the path of the, of the thought. And detours don't often work. Look at that. Terrible. So, I'll mix up some darks and slaps. You know, on these cloudy days, uh, with the darks on the sea or the lake become chased away, as I tell the story. They, uh, are there, but they're chased away by the very cloudiness of the sky, the bounce of the light. So I can't have too many darks. So I'll put in a few more, but not too much. Not too much. We're just coming through here. Yeah, you gotta get some sturdy, sturdy darks in here. That's gonna be the sway, this is gonna be the way, this way, this way, this way. We get those sliding in, they can roll and be beautiful. So we get a general feeling of how twists and turns, but all around the ship has some so dark, some wave shapes and things. There, 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 there. Back there, all shapes, waves, and things like that. One time, I don't know, it's kind of not a bad idea to do some scummy. The wind uh, perhaps could be rising. And with a rising wind, why uh, we could have some uh, scumble effects across the surface of the water, where you have what is called cat's paws, and they can just dust across. I'll put a few of those in. Where the combination of this, this, gray, gray, I need a little more. So that gray sky can hit down and and you can get some rather rough stuff. test out foam. Foam lies across that stuff, so put a few of them in. Even when the sun isn't quite out, it can uh, stretch across with quite a bit of whiteness. Not forgetting, though, that there's a little uh, touch of sun coming through uh, where the ship is breaking. So when the sails are that lit, there's bound to be a sunspot which comes and goes with total magic. I saw a few of those today on the lake, sunspots here and there. So lift that up a notch with some extra spots through the wood. And this could be in a sun spot. So pretty and bright and fresh. Stretching across and disappearing over there. 
well, it's going to be in the sunspot. <laughs> then there's got to be pure white foam around that ship. Probably whiter than any foam anyplace else. But what I got to do is... Show the water line. I got to have a red shield of water line. Of course, the water line is the sun on this side, the shadow on the other, so that we have to go that down a bit. And I'm hoping that'll work. Down on one side, bright color, with its own little energetic highlight. I like to put in that little four foot highlight on the water line. that stuff up there, which would be pretty dark, having a nice dark shadow. That side. That side. That side. So, we'll finish up there. Now we have to put in the white, white foam around that ship. Those days when the light of the sea is beyond pigment. And I was painting the lake one day a few years ago and the sky was blue, rich and clear. The lake out there was so blue. I only I had to use the this came out of the tube, all I did was paint the water with scurly and blue and white and it wasn't quite bright enough. Isn't that weird? Hardly ever happens that way, but sometimes you get so Mediterranean rich pretty eyes, especially with a little shift of clouds, you get some cobalty purple touches and a little sandbar mixed in for a gold color range on the lake can be immense. Just immense. White, white foam just crisps so bright and pretty around the ship. The foam uh, pushing around the hull of a ship like that can can be spread and pushed off quite a ways in a long line. And the, what that is, if it's a, a breeze coming at an angle, the cold <coughs> can stretch out a ways. So I just carry it from here, then it can poke up again. And just be through here, even way over there. Then the foam in the shadow would be quite definitely but because the seas are coming somewhat like this, they won't spread out so much. It'll actually have a rebound effect. So then we'll put some more foam things in. Develop the water a little bit. And I'll oh, make the uh, piece of the ship with sea water. The wake of the ship. You know, seas like that, they have a wake of the ship, it can be quite rich and pretty. Could be some definite feeling of behind the hull. Wake of a ship can really spread and lift uh, on some oncoming following sea. So, crested with a little white, that can be so pretty. Caps every place else, boy, you can have a <coughs> 
so with the rising wind, sometimes you can get the white caps uh, lifting and popping up before the wind settles them down to a bigger shape. And when it keeps on going, then the white caps get kind of fat. They can lift and be fat huge. When it keeps on rising and going, we get monsters. Where they leap over the horizon of the lake and come in a while. But this is just a starting up. So we get. the day of foam trails too. A day like this with the rising wind, you get foam trails coming back behind those dead gum white caps and they can just be stretching behind them. And gray ones and white ones. For a little form, we can of course impose the sky on the water a bit more. As I tell my receptive students, a lot of times the drops will flatten out. The more they flatten out due to the action of the water, they get more sky hitting down. So i got to show areas where that sky does hit down a little bit more. It could be an area through. Another area could be flattened out area with a drop, except that gray sky. Then the punch and pull. And get all this stuff. Then you finally come with the extra darks that you might have lost. Reassert the lost darks with some sturdy green, rich green, old dark blue. Make sure it's all there. And, uh, So you was wiggling in the working through, getting them all developed.
darks get brief underneath the spoon and get a little extra dark section. There are all the darks through So what I'll do is um, rig up the ship a little bit. I'll put on some of the running rigging, get some darks and more. No, it all comes through. Lightweight stuff. Some of these dark lines help uh, develop the anatomy of the ship. So I'll put a little line down through the floor. One, two, three, oh, I'll take the line down the floor. Hey, what the world is trying? There's some thin rigging stuff come up above. I'll leave it in. Well, some of these finishing touches help round out a ship. Just details of the hose, hole, and the uh, anchor lying there in the edge. I'll put that in. Some of these are rich and black. Just a little bit of energy. Well, it's a dot and a dash, and stenographic technique at times to uh, flick through some of the reading on a sketchy ship. But I'll put a few more touches on there just to energize it, make sure the thing has some look of. Well, and 
nice light along it. White deck houses can catch the sun with some brilliance of their own. So a flick of that, an illusion of that won't hurt. They oftentimes would tip but to boom for the jib, so to speak. All you gotta do now is maybe show some water pouring off that hull of the ship. It's, it's rough enough for a little of that. Also a little um, touch of highlighting. Stuff in here, this is kind of 